To Pipe, baseball means everything. He believes there is no better feeling than picking up a bat and hitting the ball high into the sky. Pipe dreams of playing baseball in front of millions of people one day. But there's one problem. Pipe is a me. Even more worrying, Pipe has never played Wii Sports in his life. He was banned from the Wii as a kid as he forgot to tighten his wrist strap. Instead, Pipe has had to train his whole life in the Mii Plaza, hoping that one day he will get his big break. And although his dream seems distant, his journey may finally have begun, because Pipe has just signed for his first ever baseball team, the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers. The Stoke-on-Trent steamers have long been described as a relic of a forgotten age. They've been kicking around since the olden days of Wii Sports Baseball, 2006 to be exact. However, as the years have gone by, the steamers have really let off the gas, and they now find themselves as least favourites to win the annual Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. The winners of this cup will receive the highest honour any athlete has ever received, the coveted golden Nintendo Wii. It is Pipe's dream to get his hands on this monumental prize, possibly even a golden nunchuck as well. <laughs> You're thinking, no chance, but with this team, this year, he might just have a shot. Let me introduce you to the boys. Captain, Engine Room. The heart and soul of the team, Engine Room embodies everything it means to be a Stoke-on-Trent steamer. Passion, hard work, determination, and a very strange looking face. He may not be the best batter, but his leadership skills are almost passable, and that's why he gets in the team. Tactician, Mind Brain. A descendant of Alan Turing, Sherlock Holmes, and Professor Layton, Mind Brain is the sharpest me in the game. Some say he won three seasons of University Challenge all by himself, but that's not true because he never went to university. Mind brain can predict his opponent's moves so far ahead that by the time they actually perform the move, he's forgotten what it was. With mind brain around, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers will always have the tactical advantage. Batting specialist, Barn Owl. Abandoned in the woods as a child, Barn Owl was raised by a family of Barn Owls. As a result, he has razor-sharp sensors, expert precision, and eats mice. Batting Specialist, Scalene, winner of the World's Strongest Woman 2012. Scalene has the right arm of Popeye and the left arm of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Wild Card, Xavier. Xavier is an unknown quantity. Some days he's brilliant, some days terrible. The only thing consistent with Xavier is his hordes of adoring fans and his obnoxious theme song. Bowling Specialist, Pipe. First name Pipe, second name Dream. After performing exceptionally well in county trials, he's the newest member of the team with a whole lot to prove. He's noticeable by his yellow beanie, which rumour has it is actually sewed to his head. Fielding specialist, Smaug. Hailing from the Lonely Mountain, Smaug has taken a break from hoarding gold to become one of the safest hands in modern baseball. Fielding specialist, Cardboard. One of the most boring me's ever created. Batting specialist, Wrinkles. Wrinkles is Engine Room's granddad. He's also blind, which isn't great for baseball. Fielding specialist, Spindle. A fine catch who is only ever let down by her persistent lockjaw. Cursed with a mouth that can never be closed, Spindle uses this to her advantage to intimidate her opponents. And then there's Venus. With the team assembled, it was time to travel to the home of Wii Sports Baseball. Uh, the baseball tab on the, on the Wii Sports home menu. And with the press of a button, the team arrived in Baseball City. Oh boy, coach, we're in the big city. I'm not the coach, I'm the captain, but yes, we're in the big city. Wow, it's so big. Wow, it's really big. Uh, and it's a city. Stop sightseeing, we're here to play baseball, damn it. And just like that, the whole team was fired up for their first match. Here's how the tournament would work. Four groups of six will each compete in a mini league. The top four of each will go through to the knockout stages, which will entail a round of 16, quarterfinal, semi-final, and grand final. As he prepared for the first game, Pipe dreamed of competing on the biggest of stages. But if he was going to get there, he and the team would need to negotiate their way through the group stage. And they wanted a big start against their first opposition. Brown Town.
Famous for its prominence in the game of Monopoly, Brown Town is situated right in the center of a swamp. Brown Town's Captain Jesse was certainly not to be messed with. And what's more, after performing so well in Team Trials, Pipe found himself as the opening batter. He was shaking with nerves. This was the big moment, his first ever professional hit. The ball came towards him, and... A foul ball, not a bad start, decent height on it. Pipe felt himself filling with confidence. But then... You're out. It couldn't have been a worse start. Pipe was out on his second ever hit. But there was no time to think about it. The game would carry on whether he liked it or not, and thankfully, the ever-reliable Captain Engine Room was in next to get the situation back on track. And he did so with great success. Oh god no, things are really not going as planned. The team were demoralized, and they couldn't even get a single. But it's often said that in times of need, the greatest of us step up. Engine Room is one of those greats. With this first run on the board, the team were in ecstatic spirits, and spurred on by this good mood, star batter Scalene stepped up and smashed the ball long for a double. The crowd went absolutely wild, but they weren't cheering for Scalene. As good as her double was, no. Xavier had just stepped onto the field. The chanting was deafening, even after Xavier sliced his first three shots, at which point Xavier became bored with the attention and decided to hit a simple grass cutter, which resulted in a single. Seeing as he was so popular, Xavier was a tough act to follow, and Spindle, mouth gaping open as usual, was struggling to handle the pressure. Thankfully, after briefly getting a bat stuck inside of her own head, she also managed a single, meaning the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were now two to the good. Smaug was up next, hoping to continue this golden streak, but she hit it straight into the ground and was caught out. With this, the steamers were only one mistake away from the end of their first innings. And up next was Engine Room's blind granddad. Wrinkles. Oh god no. Not being able to see the ball, Wrinkles began to swing wildly, hoping that by pure chance he might make some contact. As you could guess, this technique didn't work, and he was struck out. The sides changed positions, and it was finally time for Pipe to redeem himself. He was now standing in his favourite position on the baseball pitch. Pitcher. His first pitch was straight and true, arrowing past Jesse before she even had time to think about it. His second had much the same effect, and the third was so powerful all Jesse could do was spoon it up into the air. The next thing everyone knew, Jesse, Browntown's star player, had been struck out by none other than Pipe. In stepped Abby, hoping to do better than her captain, but Pipe had other ideas, and he began to absolutely bring the sauce, striking her out too. Looks like you're next, Kentaro. Ha ha ha, bold of you to think you have a chance. Take this, Kentaro, take this- oh. 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 At this moment, Pipe snapped out of his overconfidence. He knew that if he was to make up for his shambolic batting performance, he would have to take this a bit more seriously. And after Matt hit his shot too straight, Pipe dove down to his right and scooped it up to end Browntown's first innings. Now the steamers could flex their batting muscles once more, and it was Barnell who kicked things off with a sweet double. double. Unfortunately, at this point, it was Mind Brain's turn. Oh god, he's not gonna do his usual thing, is he? Okay, if I just position myself here... Oh no, here he goes. Wind speed is 2 kilometers an hour. Temperature is a mild 15 degrees Celsius. The sun is angled at an 80 degree angle to the horizon, which means if I turn my bad two fractions counterclockwise, then... No, I have to adjust the polarity by 14 decibels. Curses, I was one percentile out. With this, the team had done one full rotation, and Pipe found himself needing to bat again. Just as nervous as the first time, he tried to steady his hands as best he could. And then, something magical happened. Pipe had really hit the ball. And not just hit it, he'd bagged himself his first double, meaning the steamers scored yet another run. Brimming with pride in his new teammate, Engine Room followed suit, and Pipe was able to experience the feeling of reaching home base for the first time in his life. 
At this point, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were really flying, as star batter Scalene used her massive arms to thunder the ball up into the air and out for another home run, making the score 6-1. Fangirls and boys worldwide held their breath as even Xavier nearly hit a home run for himself. Spindle hit a single and then, as with all good things, Smaug and Wrinkles made sure the innings came to an end. The steamer's first match continued in high spirits, as Pipe sent bowl after bowl streaking past the Browntown team. Even Wrinkles, although having no idea where the ball was, managed to make a catch. By the third innings, they were still 6-2 up, and after a cheeky single from Barn Owl, it was once again Mind Brain's turn. Even he couldn't mess this game up. Wind speed, 2 km an hour. Pulse, regular. Calculating trajectory of 120 degrees northwest. Carry the two, make sure to accommodate for the missing percentile, and with careful cushioning reactionary force of 0.7 newtons. Single. Hmm, good. Pipe walked into the batting area once more, this time knowing he would hit the ball. And, putting all his effort into the swing, he sent the ball skimming across the grass, managing to bag himself a very impressive triple, scoring the Stoke-on-Trent steamers another two runs. Ooh, up steps engine room as reliable as ever. No worries, at least we have star batter Scalene next, that should be fine. The pressure now fell on Xavier, and despite the sheer volume of the crowd, Xavier was blocking them out. For although they held a considerable lead, one more out, and their final innings of the first game was over. Xavier breathed deeply and listened to his own theme tune playing in his head. With that, he swung. Single. Oh my god. Well, it doesn't matter how you score them, the steamers were still in. What followed for Brown Town was borderline cruel. Spindle with a double, and then Smaug with a beautiful home run. And at 12-2 up, nobody even cared about Wrinkle's blind swinging. The game was practically won, and another fine bowling innings from Pipe sealed the deal. The Stoke-on-Trent steamers had won their first game by 12 runs to 2. Once the pandemonium of celebrations had calmed down, that evening the steamers went back to the baseball field to practice for tomorrow's game. But when they turned up, they found a harrowing sight. Tomorrow's opponents, the Salmon Fishers, were already there. And on top of this, they were demanding a practice match. Engine Room accepted with great enthusiasm. Not only would this be a chance to learn how the opposition play, but the steamers were on a high at the moment, and giving the Salmon Fishers a good thumping now would help with morale tomorrow. The stage was set. Everyone took their positions, and the practice match began. The leader of the Salmon Fishers and their best pitcher, James, was rumoured to be one of the tournament's biggest wild cards. And as Pipe faced up against him, he soon found out why. Expecting an extremely fast ball, Pipe swiped early to make sure he hit it. However, James had actually pitched the ball incredibly slowly, and instead of smashing it into the stands, Pipe found himself being caught out. Could James really have pitched this badly on purpose? And it wasn't just Pipe who was having problems either. Scalene uncharacteristically hit her shot straight to the opposition fielder. Barn Owl only managed a single. And then there was Venus. Double. But Smaug also found herself caught out. By the end of the first innings, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers had no runs. Pipe would have to put in one hell of a pitching performance. Not letting James's bad pitching distract him, he decided to pitch the only way he knew how. Hard, fast, and straight. But Pipe was finding pretty mixed success. It seemed, although some couldn't deal with his extreme power, some batters weren't troubled in the slightest. And it was only thanks to a lucky catch which fell straight into Wrinkle's hands before he even realised that the steamers were only one down going into the second innings. Thankfully, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers did have one player that provided a thorn in pitcher James's side. And that player was Wrinkle's. As Wrinkle's tactic so far had been to continually swipe in the hope that he times his batting correctly, James's slow balls increased Wrinkle's chances of success. But just as the ball began to travel towards him, Wrinkle's realised something very strange. Although he couldn't see the ball, it was moving so slowly that he could sense it. Wrinkle's recalled his time as a young samurai, 
His sensei had once made him perform a drill in which he had to chop moving logs with his eyes closed. He'd had to picture the log in his mind using all of his samurai senses. And now those senses were kicking back in. Finally, with the help of some questionable fielding, Wrinkles scored a single. Spindle stepped up next in a state of disbelief at what had just happened. Not that you'd be able to tell she was in disbelief as her mouth is always open. In all her years of playing baseball for the steamers, Engine Room's granddad had never once hit a ball. And imitating his technique, she too tried her hardest to sense the ball. It worked! A home run! And with the rest of the team starting to hone their senses too, Cardboard was able to hit a home run as well. And then, it was Pipe's turn. Following Wrinkle's advice, he frowned hard, imagining the ball coming towards him. As with the others, he made a connection, and the ball soared into the air for Pipe's first home run. And then there's Venus. You're out. The only player who wasn't quite playing along with Wrinkle's tactic was Mind Brain, who was still attempting to calculate the perfect shot. Judging on previous events, it seems there's a 90% chance this is a slow pitch. That means if I subtract n from the inverse of the improper fraction, then carry the 2... You're out! Curses, I forgot to square root. And, after being distracted by a small rodent on the pitch, Barn Owl was also caught out, ending the team's second innings. The steamers had managed to amass a substantial lead. However, the team were now beginning to get fatigued and started to make some stupid mistakes. It was only thanks to Pipe's brilliant pitching that they went into the third innings still ahead. By this time, it seemed James had become frustrated with the steamer's ability to sense his slow pitches. But instead of reverting to fastballs, he seemed to decide to pitch even slower. These pitches were so slow that even Wrinkles, with his samurai senses, was struggling to tell where they would land. It almost felt as if the ball would drop out of the sky before it reached the players. The steamers were caught out, and the final innings of the game began with more bad news. No matter how fast Pipe bowled, they seemed to have figured him out. It turns out if you pitch the ball fast and straight every single time, the other team will figure out that you're pitching the ball fast and straight. The scoreline was now four apiece. Were they really going to lose? What did this mean for tomorrow? It didn't bode very well. Pipe thought hard. Was there anything he could do? Something new he could try? And then came a shout from the bench. It was engine room. Pipe, switch it up a bit. And suddenly, it all made sense. He would try pitching slow like James, but he wouldn't just match him, he would pitch even slower. He imagined it in his head, the ball dropping out of the air before it reached the player. And almost completely by accident, Pipe mastered a type of pitch known as the splitter. Although this pitch was technically not legal, it was so deceptive that the opposition were tricked into swinging. Had they not swung, Pipe might have been penalised. But, as it was, he was able to salvage the game, and the practice match ended in a tie. Morning broke the next day, and there was an air of nerves about the team. One thing was for sure. This time, they would not underestimate the salmon fishers. Once again, Pipe was first up, and this time, it counted. Sense the ball, Pipe. Sense the ball. Bang! Relief melted over him like an ice cream on a hot day. He had managed to hit the ball, and with that, the rest of the game went perfectly. Barn Owl used his supersonic hearing and hit a huge home run. Then Scalene got a double, and so did the newly reinvigorated Wrinkles. Smaug hit a smart single, and then there's Venus. The only letdowns were Xavier, who was busy working on his improved theme tune in his head, and Mind Brain, who managed to miss the ball entirely. Curses, I forgot Pythagoras' theorem. No worries, the Stoke-on-Trent steamers were 6-0 up, and Pipe now had a new pitching technique to employ. Perfect. He would give James a taste of his own medicine. Wait, what? Pipe tried again, but James wasn't swinging. Being a slow pitcher himself, James had seen through Pipe's disguise. And by the time the fourth pitch landed, Pipe had given away a free single. You're a fraud, said James as he skipped merrily to the first base. It was here that Pipe realised something. Sure, the splitter was a useful weapon in his arsenal, but he wasn't a slow pitcher. He'd always dreamed of being the fastest pitcher the world had ever seen. What was he to do? Engine Room's words echoed around in his head. Pipe, switch it up a bit. That's it. The key to good pitching isn't being fast or being slow. It's all about variation. Without another thought, Pipe began to unleash hell. 
a no ball, one strike, two strikes, a catch, and another strike out. Pipe was so informed that the referee declared a mercy rule. The Salmon Fishers had been defeated, and the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers had their second win of the competition. But they weren't done for the day. They still had one more match to go. And when they found out who they were against, it wiped the smiles off almost all of their faces. The next match was against the Steamers top rivals. A team captained by a player who haunted the memories of Engine Room and every other one of the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers. A player so good they actually renamed the whole club after her. Would the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers really be up to the task of taking on Lucia's baseball team? Lucia may have always been a great baseball player, but she was even better at mind games. The Stoke-on-Trent Steamers had lost to Lucia's baseball team every single time they had played each other. And for Captain Engine Room, the prospect of playing them once again brought up some painful memories. The time he'd tripped over when running to first base. The time he'd been caught out by their second best pitcher. Engine Room felt his confidence beginning to waver. But no Engine Room. If you let her get to you now, she's already won. The game was about to begin, and the teams lined up as they had in the previous two matches. But this time, instead of remaining silent, Lucia took the opportunity to get into the steamer's heads. Hey, hey guys, your team is really bad at baseball. Oh, Lucia, how could you say that? Yeah, yeah, I bet you don't even know how to swing a bat. Oh, Lucia, what the hell, man? You can't say these things. Oh, Lucia, oh. Yeah, and see your new pitcher over there? Pipe froze. Yeah, I bet he's not even any good. You leave Pipe out of this, Lucia, said Engine Room. Don't worry, Pipe, just focus on your own game. Don't let it get to you. Easier said than done. As as usual, Pipe was batting first. He stepped up to the batting area, and the game began. What does she mean, bad pitcher? Am I really a bad pitcher? Pipe was crumbling under Lucia's words. Why is she so mean? Oh! Pipe had been so busy focusing on what Lucia had said that he mishit his shot straight into her arms. Ha 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 went Lucia as Pipe walked back to the bench feeling mighty embarrassed. The steamers already had one out, and then there was Venus. You're out. The game had got off to a terrible start. One more out, and the team would score no runs in the first innings. Even more worrying, it was up to Mind Brain to get them back on track. I'm detecting a wind speed of 8 knots. Take away the 3, carry the 7, Alpha Alpha Bravo Bravo, and... You're out! Curses. My shoelace was untied. Shoelace is untied or not, the fact of the matter was, Lucia had managed to get three players out in a row. And if the steamers didn't want to fall behind, Pipe would have to pitch like an absolute machine. But as he geared himself up for his first pitch, Lucia once again began to antagonize him. What you gonna do, new boy? You'll never be as good at pitching as me. Pipe was so angered by this that before he could stop himself, he threw the ball as hard as he could. Lucia was taken aback at just how fast he managed to throw it. But unfortunately, Engine Room was in no headspace to react to Lucia's blunder, and he fumbled his catch. Hoo <laughs> you're supposed to be a captain, and you can't even make a simple catch, spat Lucia as she ran to the first base. The pressure was building more and more, and Pipe's next two balls were some real stinkers, the second of which resulting in a home run. Things had gone from bad to worse. The steamers were 3-0 down, and Lucia's baseball team continued to pick up runs. That is, until a familiar face stepped into the batting area. Hold on, James, what are you doing here? We already played you last match. Oh, no, that was my twin brother, James. This idle chit-chat allowed Engine Room to calm himself down. And after he managed his first fine catch, him and Scalene made sure the scoreline didn't get any worse. First up to bat in the second innings was Wrinkles, Engine Room's blind granddad. Wrinkles tried to block out everything around him, focusing only on sensing where the ball would fly. But Lucia had caught on to what he was doing, and she began to shout at the top of her lungs. You're really old! You're really old! Wrinkles' concentration broke, and he was caught out. Now, it was Engine Room's turn, but having recuperated a bit of self-belief after his two catches, he managed to squeeze a single. Finally, a Stoke-on-Trent Steamers player had hit the ball properly. Lucia's face twisted into a scowl. Engine Room was beginning to turn the tide, and she wasn't happy. Her tactics became even more dirty. 
When Scalene stepped up, Lucia mocked her haircut, saying she looked like she was wearing a swimming cap. This had the desired effect, and Scalene bottled her shot. When Spindle stepped up, Lucia purposely aimed the ball towards her open mouth, trying to get it lodged inside. Spindle was only just able to deflect the ball away, but she too was caught out. As they changed sides, the steamers once again had zero runs. Pipe was left with a mountain to climb, and with only one batting innings left, they really couldn't afford to concede even one more point. For the steamers to stand any chance, Pipe would have to strike three batters out in a row. He tried to calm his nerves as much as possible. He would pitch the way he had always done, hard and fast. And with one explosive throw, the batter couldn't cope and engine room scooped up the ball to get him out. One down, two to go. But next up was Lucia again. She began with her usual antics. Ooh, are you scared, new boy? Does baby need his bottle? Don't listen to a pipe. I believe in you. Pipe gulped and went to pitch. One strike, good. Then a foul ball. Pipe was growing in confidence. If there was any time to use it, this was the time to bring out his new move, the splitter. But Lucia saw straight through him and refused to swing. Fine, Pipe thought. He would just have to do it his own way. Bang, another explosive pitch. And Lucia was left stunned. The ball was in the backstop's gloves before she even saw it. Two down, one left to go. And brimming with confidence, Pipe's throw was good and Wrinkles used his samurai sensors to catch the ball. The steamers may have still been 3-0 down, but morale was high again and it was their turn to bat. Who better to step up now then, but Xavier. The crowd erupted into harmonious song as Xavier's theme tune rang around the stadium. Xavier was on top of the world. He felt he could do anything, but then, Lucia's voice cut through the chanting. Xavier? Uh, never heard of you. Xavier was caught out. The steamers were devastated and all momentum was gone. Thankfully, up next was a man who didn't care for emotions or morale. Thanks to an injury to Smaug's right wing, Cardboard had been substituted in. How boring, he thought. Well, better get this over with. <sighs> there we go. But although he didn't realise it, Cardboard had just salvaged the game, and Pipe felt even more determined than ever. Lucia once again began insulting him, but Pipe didn't care. He now knew that she was all talk, and imitating Cardboard, he tried to balance his emotions and restrain his anger. With one big swing, the steamers were now just one run behind, and then there was Venus. The steamers had defied the odds and made an incredible comeback, but the game was far from over, and after further miscalculations, Mindbrain was caught out. Oh, curses, that's not good. Followed swiftly by Wrinkles. The best the steamers could hope for now was a draw, but to Pipe and the rest of the team, this result was more than satisfactory. Pipe felt a huge weight on his shoulders. It was up to him to get the team through this innings unscathed. But after letting one single slip, Pipe resumed his good pitching form and caught the next two batters out. You're out. Just one more. One more out and the steamers' comeback would be complete. Perfect. Up next was James's twin brother, James. Pipe had got him out once before, he could do it again. But James had been talking to his brother James whilst on the bench, and James had advised James on what to expect from Pipe's pitching. As a result, James was able to hit a double. This was particularly bad, as it placed Lucia's baseball team one single away from victory. Jake stepped up to the batting area. It was make or break. Pipe had to get him out. The air was tense. The crowd went silent. But just as Pipe geared up to pitch, the sun came out from behind the clouds and shone directly down into the player's eyes. Pipe was almost completely blinded. He couldn't see what was going on. But Jake, on the other hand, had come prepared. He was wearing sunglasses and having superior vision, he was able to hit the ball in between the fielders and grab a single. 
the steamers had lost for the first time in the tournament. Lucia had won, and even worse, engine room collapsed. The team sat around engine room in his hospital ward. The mood was glum. After such a devastating loss, Engine Room had aggravated a recurring injury to his confidence. He'd first sustained the injury a couple of years back when a skiing holiday in Austria went wrong, and he'd been in and out of hospital with it ever since. Guys, Lucia was right. I'm not a very good captain. No, don't say that, Engine Room, don't say that. I don't even deserve to be in the team. No, please, Engine Room, it's okay. I can't do this. I can't be captain anymore. Engine room, my friend, said Mindbrain. We have known each other since we were only babies. That's... not true. Okay, fine, we've known each other for a few years now, and there is no player I trust more than you. Gee, thanks, man. I just don't know if I can carry on, though. Listen, if being captain is stressing you out too much, how about I help you? Really? You would do that for me? Of course, my friend. Thank you, Mindbrain. You are my best pal. No problem, man. Now you just rest up and get better for tomorrow. Mindbrain turned to face the team. Okay, guys. Here's the plan. Tomorrow we face our fourth opponents, the Pittsburgh Purples. Considering how close the points are right now, it's a must-win game. The Pittsburgh Purples may not have any big hitters, but they work well as a unit, which means their fielding is really good. You might be thinking, well, let's just hit it as hard as we can and go for home runs, correct? Well, yeah. No, that's what they want us to do. Instead, we're actually going to hit the ball with as little power as possible. You mean like you do every single time? Well, I don't do it every single time. Yes, you do. You do it every single time. Please, guys, trust me. You're all I have. The next day came, and the game was about to start. Okay, Mindbrain, we'll trust you. Hmm. Well then, let's begin. Seeing as he'd taken captaincy for this first match, Mindbrain decided to bat first to show the rest of the team just how it was done. With that, he began his calculations. Temperature is 23 degrees, wind speed 4 kilometers an hour southwest. Hours of sleep, 4, meaning I need to enhance my abilities with a mantra. Ricky tiki tumba, ricky tiki tumba. Add 12, divide by 300 cube, then square the 4. Single. And that's how it's done. Smaug had returned from injury, and she was up next. And attempting to copy Mindbrain, she began to list arbitrary things that came into her head. Um... Lord of the Rings is three hours long. E extended editions are nearly four. The, the Hobbit shouldn't have been three movies. I am fire. I am death. Xavier then did the same. Uh, Xavier, 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 uh, Xavier. And just like that, the Steamers had three singles already. Then there's Venus. You're out. And finally, it was Pipe's turn. But unlike Xavier and Smaug, he was finding this technique a bit more difficult. Don't worry, Pipe. If it doesn't work out, you just say curses and then blame something random. Curses. My my beanie wasn't on properly. Good job, Pipe. Good job. Wrinkles was next, but being blind, it would be difficult for him to judge exactly where to hold his bat. Wrinkles remembered back to a time when his sensei had made him catch tofu balls in midair in between his chopsticks or whilst wearing a blindfold. And, focusing on this experience, Wrinkles also managed a single. With this, the rest of the team started to get the hang of Mindbrain's tactic. Even Engine Room, with a bit of luck, was successful. And by the time the team were caught out, they'd racked up five whole runs worth of singles. The teams changed sides, and it was Mindbrain's turn to pitch. Mindbrain had always been pretty terrible at pitching, but luckily for him, the Pittsburgh Purples were pretty terrible at batting as well, so it balanced out. More than anything, it meant the world to Mindbrain that he got to captain the steamers just this once. Ever since he was young, Mindbrain had never really fit in. While the other kids were outside playing, he was sitting inside calculating things in his head, trapped in his own analytical imagination. Although it may not have shown in his expressionless face, this team meant the world to Mindbrain. 
It was the only place he'd ever really fit in. The only place he had true, real friends. All this positivity carried Mindbrain through his pitching, and at 5-0 up going into the second innings, the referee declared a mercy rule, and the steamers had won. The whole team flocked towards Mindbrain in celebration, and then towards Engine Room. Thanks guys, said both Mindbrain and Engine Room at the same time, and thank you Mindbrain, I think I've finally got my confidence back. Now let's go and win this final group stage game. The Steamers' next game was against Catherine's crew, a team full of players who'd all legally changed their name to Catherine. With the Steamers' morale at an all-time high though, for Catherine's crew this would not be a pleasant affair. And right from the off, the Steamers began on top form. Pike struck the ball sweetly, up, up into the air, and out for a home run. Then, the crowd went absolutely mental as Xavier hit a home run of his own. And then there was Venus. Home run. Even when pitching, Pipe and the team were in immaculate form. And sure, the team full of Catherine scored a few runs here and there, but they were in for a real thumping. Barnell with another home run. Wrinkles with another home run. Xavier with yet another home run. And then there's Venus, oh my goodness! It was unbelievable. And then there's Venus again, whoa! By the time the chaos had subsided, the Steamers had won the game by 13 runs to 7. And it felt quite fitting that such an insane match had sent them through to the knockout stages. This was it. Pipe and the team had progressed through the group with flying colours. What awaited them would promise to be even more challenging, but they were well on their way to the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. After celebrating their progression through the group stage, that evening all of the Stoke-on-Trent steamers huddled around the TV in the hotel lobby. The mood was tense, as they were about to find out who they were playing in the round of 16. And now in sporting news, we take a look at the fixtures for the next round of the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup. Shush, shush, everyone, it's about to come on. Let's first take a look at which teams managed to get through the group stages. In group one, it was honors even between Lucia's baseball team and the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers, as they both finished neck and neck on 12 points. Also qualifying are the Salmon Fishers and the Pittsburgh Purples. Group two sees Yarikawa Prefecture make it to the knockouts for the 11th time in their club history, finishing just ahead of the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society. Coming in third was Bambra and just sneaking in is Sporting Hokkaido. The British Museum Association baseball team found themselves out and out leaders of Group 3, followed by Herobrine Athletic, Bottle Jobs FC and Turtlenecks United. And it's commiserations to tournament newbies under Passage Wanderers who put in a brave display. And finally, waltzing through Group 4 is of course the current champions, the Mordor Giants, with the Luigi's Mansion Ghosts a distant second, followed by fellow strugglers Bumfluff City and Dirt Munchers FC. And with that, now to the thing you've all been waiting for, the draw for the round of 16 matches. Oh, oh, turn it up, this is it. And if everyone's ready, I'll begin. The first match will be the Mordor Giants versus Turtlenecks United. Versus Bambara FC, Herobrine Athletic versus Bumfluff Bay City, Sporting Team versus Sporting Hokkaido, versus the British Purple, Museum Association Baseball versus Team versus Luigi's Dirt Munchers Munchers FC. And finally, our last match will be the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers versus the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society. Who? Gary Barlow? Oh no, said Mindbrain. Oh no, no, no. What is it, Mindbrain? Deary, deary me. What's wrong? <sighs> Gather round, everyone. You'll need to hear this. The Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society might sound pretty casual to those who don't know them. Yeah, it just sounds like a bunch of amateurs, to be honest. It's quite the opposite. The society, in essence, is dedicated towards Gary Barlow, a singer-songwriter and member of the 90s UK boy band Take That. But here's the thing, my friends, it goes much, much deeper. This is a society run on specialist recruitment and meticulous training. Each member is selected based on their undying love for Gary Barlow, and that love is used to form a team unity like you've never seen before. The result of this is known as the Wall of Hands, a name feared by even the world's best batters. Some say it's like everywhere you hit the ball, a hand appears. A mass of arms, all moving as one. 
In all their years in the competition, they've never conceded more than three runs. Well, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do what we always do. What we have done. We're gonna play baseball, goddammit! I mean, yeah, I figured that, but they think they work as a team. We'll show them a team. Yeah, we'll show yeah, them a woo, team. Let's yeah, go, let's woo. do this, guys. Yeah, we'll let's show do this. Them a team. Right, everyone to bed. I want you well rested for tomorrow. Especially you, Pipe. We're gonna need a big performance tomorrow. But Pipe's nerves were making him dizzy, and by the time the next day arrived, he got so little sleep that he was late heading to the pitch for a warm up. The only other person still at the hotel was Xavier, who always tried to turn up fashionably late anyway. The two of them left the team hotel and headed into the ground. But before they could reach the pitch, they were stopped in their tracks by none other than the captain of the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society, Haley, also known as Big H. Oh, look, it's that nobody Xavier. I heard you're famous for being in a shampoo advert, and you aren't actually talented at all. <laughs> Gary Barlow is way better than you. Pipe and Xavier did their best to ignore the taunts, but Big H was in Xavier's head. And due to the holdup, by the time they arrived, the match was about to start. The teams lined up, and the round of 16 began. Like always, Pipe was batting first, but as he stepped up to the batting area, he once again felt dizzy with nerves. And before he could calm himself, Big H had thrown a killer of a curveball. If anything, the spin on this curveball made him even more dizzy, and Big H took advantage of this by trying to trick him with a splitter. It was only on the third ball that Pipe actually managed to hit it. But lo and behold, the ball flew straight into the wall of hands. Pipe was out. Next up was Cardboard, who unlike Pipe, wasn't letting the pressure get to him. Huh, <laughs> bunch of snowflakes. But Cardboard's confidence was misplaced, and although he felt he had hit the ball well, yet again, the wall of hands were there to catch him out. This was a terrible start, and the pressure now fell on Barn Owl. Barn Owl prided himself on his precision and accuracy. If anyone was going to bypass the wall of hands, it would have to be him. But as he stood in the batting area, something strange began to happen. The whole crowd burst into song. It was one of Take That's most famous tunes, Back For Good. The song was so loud that Barn Owl's super senses were going haywire, and just to top it all off, Big H began to shout over the crowd. So you're Barn Owl, are you? I heard you were raised in the woods by owls. Aren't you embarrassed? For Barn Owl, this was the final straw. He misplaced his shot, and he too was caught out by the wall of hands. The steamers had scored zero runs in their first innings. Pipe would have to put in a good pitching performance, but as he threw his first ball, the Gary Barlow fans once again erupted into song. The atmosphere was making Pipe dizzy again, and completely by accident, instead of his usual fastballs, he began to bowl something known as a screwball. Having been trained by Big H, most of the Gary Barlow fan club's players were able to deal with this accidental spin, and if not for Scalene's strong arms, the steamers would have been far more than 2-0 down going into the second innings. Now it was Smaug's turn to bat, but imbued with the courage of a dragon, Smaug gave it everything she had, and finally, the steamers had scored a single. This gave a boost to Scalene, who was already on a high from her hat-trick of catches, and building up every ounce of strength within her huge arms, she unleashed a cannon of a shot, and hit the ball over the wall of hands, and out for a home run. This was it. If the steamers were going to win this game, the only way was to bypass the wall of hands and get more home runs. Well played, Scalene, shouted the steamers bench. We can do this, guys, she returned. But what she hadn't realised is that next up was Mindbrain, who was trying out a new tactic. Ha ha ha, let's see if the wall of hands can handle this one. My new tactic, the on guard. Okay, just wide, need to adjust by four millimetres to the right. Yes, a hit, good, and now all I have to do is swing my bat slightly and... Strike! Batter out! Curses, what am I doing? I never swing my bat. All momentum was now gone again, and even wrinkles with his samurai senses could do nothing but hit it straight into the wall of hands. You're out! Finally, it was Xavier's turn. The Gary Barlow fans began to sing once again. Oh, look who it is, it's Mr. Special! 
and Xavier failed to hit his first shot. But as he lined up for his second, something magical began to happen. The Gary Barlow fan song was overpowered by another, more familiar tune. It was Xavier's theme song. And spurred on by this, Xavier managed a big hit. It looks good. It was gonna go all the way, but it landed agonizingly just the wrong side of the post, and it was given as a foul ball. Heh, <laughs> I knew you weren't anything special. Xavier was caught out. Regardless of this, the Steamers were still drawing with the Gary Barlow fan club, and in an effort to make up for his bad batting, Xavier was running the field as fast as he could, to reduce the amount of points the opponents were scoring. This combined with the fact that Pipe had finally managed to calm his nerves, and a couple of tactical catches from Mindbrain, meant that going into their final batting innings, the Steamers once again had a chance to get that all-important home run. Feeling responsible for the way the Gary Barlow fan club had been able to belittle his players, the Steamers captain Engine Room knew he had to be brave. He too was no stranger to a slip in confidence, but this time, he had to muster the courage. Not for himself, but for Barn Owl, for Xavier, for everyone. And, like a comic book hero, Engine Room swung with the weight of the whole team behind him. The ball flew high into the air and over the dreaded sea of hands. The Steamers were now ahead for the first time in the game. This made the so-called Sea of Hands very angry. Only once had they ever conceded this many runs, and as a result, the Gary Barlow fan club ramped up their fielding, catching pipe outs and reducing cardboard to only a single. This was when Barn Owl stepped up to the batting area again, and just like last time, Big H began to insult him. So where are these owl parents anyway? Do they even know you're playing, or are they just a bunch of animals after all? For Barn Owl, these words cut deep. It was true, his parents had never turned up to any of his games. But it's not because they didn't want to, right? I mean, they're owls. They don't have money, so they can't buy tickets. But what if they just didn't care? As Big H said, they were just animals after all. Feeling deflated, Barnell once again failed to get past the wall of hands, and with hope fading and doubt setting in, Smaug too was caught out. The pressure was now on Pipe. He had to get the Gary Barlow fan club out without letting a single run go, but he couldn't forgive them for what they'd done to his friends. Pipe was sure that Barnell's parents cared about him, and he knew Xavier was talented too. Pipe was getting more and more angry, but then, Wrinkles stepped in. Pipe, do not be consumed by anger. Instead, utilize it. Direct it not at other people, but into your pitching. And with this advice, Pipe's pitching reached a whole new level. Steph was fooled by his cunning splitters. Tatsuki couldn't even hit the ball. And Tyrone was so taken aback by Pipe's dipping pitch that he hit it straight forward and Pipe was able to scoop it up to end the game. The Steamers had won, and they were through to the quarterfinals. What should have been great cause for celebration, though, felt weirdly undeserved. Although Pipe had pulled off some major heroics, on the whole, the team seemed downtrodden. What's wrong, everyone? said Engine Room. We've just won! We should be thanking Pipe! Won? interrupted Big H. I don't mean to be salty here, but you only won because of one player. Your pitcher, Pipe. Pipe felt uneasy. Everyone was looking at him. Here's my advice. You won't go far in this tournament if you aren't a team. She's right, Engine Room. I was rubbish, said Xavier. And I wasn't any good either, said Barn Owl. Nonsense! Cod's wallop! A load of old arse! We win as a team, we lose as a team. Now we don't have time for this. We're in the quarterfinals this afternoon, and we're gonna give it all we've got. And just as Engine Room said this, the matchups for the quarterfinals were announced. Ha ha ha! hell! Thanks to that unexpected victory from the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers, it seems we have a feisty matchup this afternoon, as they will be playing the British Museum Association baseball team. The British Museum Association baseball team were comprised of many seasoned veterans. Each had experienced at least three Baseball World Cups already. Their only slight weakness was that to play for them you had to accept part-time volunteer work at the British Museum, which reduced the amount of time they were able to train together. But what they lacked in team togetherness, they made up for in individual brilliance, and their star player, Sabaro, had one killer trick up his sleeve that Pipe was about to find out about. Before long, the teams were once again lining up 
and the game was about to start. That's when it happened. Saburo began to pitch, underarm. Pipe was caught completely off guard. Underarm? Why would anyone pitch underarm? Wow, that's so cool! Awestruck and unable to move properly, Pipe hit his shot straight to a British Museum fielder, and he was caught out. Next up was Spindle, who like Pipe was initially confused by the nature of Saburo's pitching. After missing her first swing, she decided to use her gaping mouth to suck in as much air as possible, oxygenating her brain and helping her to concentrate better. As a result, she was able to hit a double. Scalene, on the other hand, had already played her trump card, and her arms were yet to properly recover from her home run in the previous match. Like Pipe, she too was caught out, and Cardboard once again found himself in the hot seat. Luckily, as ever, he felt no pressure, and he was able to squeeze the ball in between second and third base with just enough power to be fumbled by the next British Museum fielder. The Steamers had scored their first run of the match, but as Smaug struggled to adjust to Saburo's underarm pitching, she too was struck out, and the teams changed sides. Pipe desperately wanted to give underarm pitching a try, but he knew that if he did, it could put the team's tournament chances in jeopardy. Ever since Big H had singled him out as the team's best performer, he felt an unwelcome spotlight, which was making him nervous again. And with Barnell's confidence so low, Saburo was able to get a lucky single. Pipe's next few pitches were pretty good, an out followed by a single. But then, Victor stepped up to the batting area. The Victor! Anyone who was anyone in the Wii Baseball world knew Victor, the man with the world record for the most home runs in a game. The spotlight Pipe was under was multiplied tenfold. He felt like he was being crushed under the gaze of the crowd around him. And, predictably, Victor was able to do what Victor famously did. Hit the ball all the way for a home run. Within an instant, the steamers had gone from 1-0 up to 3-1 down. Pipe tried to rectify this by pitching a couple of splitters, but they weren't quite working. It was now or never. He had to try it. Nothing else was working. He went for an underarm pitch. The batter returned with only a single. Not bad for a first try. He went underarm again, and this time, the batter hit it straight to him, but having been so focused on the technique, he couldn't sort his hands out quickly enough to catch the ball. And then, Michael stepped up. THE Michael, the famous Michael who'd almost single-handedly carried his team to the trophy just four years ago. It seemed practice was over, and Pipe would have to master the underarm pitch if he didn't want things to get much worse. It took him a couple of balls to get his bearings straight, but then, a strike, and then a foul ball. And with one last dipping pitch, Pipe had struck Michael out, and now he'd got the hang of the underarm technique, he was able to wrap up the innings without conceding any more runs. It was now do or die. The Steamers needed something big to get them back into the game, but next in the running order couldn't have been a worse person. Low on confidence and looking dejected, Xavier stepped up to bat. The crowd began to sing his theme tune, attempting to cheer him on, but Pipe could see that something was very wrong. Usually, Xavier's song gave him great strength, so why did he still look so upset? Xavier, what's up? Pipe, why are they chanting for me? I don't deserve all of this. I'm not talented like Gary Barlow or anyone else. I'm just gonna mess up again. Xavier had become famous after starring as the poster child for a brand of shampoo. He went viral after people thought his face looked funny. As a result, the life of fame was thrust upon him, and before he realized it, he was caught up in it all. It became an addiction. He just wanted more and more adoration. More fans singing his name but his running with Big H had brought him painfully back down to earth. Here he was, playing at the Wii Baseball World Cup, and he wasn't even any good at baseball. He wished the crowd would stop singing. If only they'd stop singing. They're singing because they like you, Xavier. Because you're a nice person. When a crowd creates a chant for a player, it means that player is pretty special. They're trying to encourage you, Xavier. They want you to succeed. Xavier felt the weight lift from his shoulders. They weren't chanting because they thought he was any greater than he was. They were chanting to encourage him. He felt proud again to have his own theme tune. He could feel the music coursing through his veins. And he knew. He knew what he had to do. Yeah.
Wow, I think I was wrong about that Xavier. He's pretty good. With this beautiful home run, the Steamers were only down two runs to three, but they just couldn't catch a break. Barn Owl was in next. Like Xavier, Barn Owl was really struggling. Where he usually had super fine-tuned sensors, he now found himself completely disorientated. If only his parents were here to give him some advice, they would know what to do. Suddenly, a distant who came from somewhere up in the stands. They were here. They were really here. We're so sorry, son. We finally came to see you play. We figured out if we just flew in from the top of the stadium, then we wouldn't have to buy tickets. Now, son, listen to me. Focus. You don't have to hit it hard, son. That's not your style. Just be accurate. Stay in for the team. And heeding his dad's advice, Barnell was able to sneak his shot in between the fielders for a smart single. single. Things were really looking up. Mind's brain managed to pull off the flick move he'd been trying earlier, and he struck the most powerful shot he'd ever struck. And now that the bases were loaded, all they needed was for Pipe to work a bit of magic. Having experienced the spotlight in such magnitude now, he felt he understood what Xavier had been going through with his fame and the prejudice that Barn Owl had had to deal with, having been raised by owls. Just like the Gary Barlow Fan Club Baseball Society, the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers had plenty of things in common. Engine Room had been right. They really were a team. And filled with team spirit, Pipe drove his bat through the air and struck the ball sweetly. The Steamers were back in front by five runs to three, and although their second innings ended swiftly after, their newfound team spirit gave them an unbreakable momentum. Pipe was able to strike Victor out without him even touching the ball. Scalene was playing a blinder on first base. And to end the game in style, Barnell made one final incredible catch. That's my boy! That's my boy! And then there was Venus too. It, he made a catch as well. But the Steamers had beaten one of the tournament's favourites. And they were through to the semi-final. Wow guys, I'm so proud of this team. I've never felt closer to a group of players. Holy heck, man. That was a real humdinger of an underarm pitch you've got there, said Saburo. Oh my goodness, thank you. Will you sign my beanie? Um, hey, Xavier? It was Big H. I think I owe you an apology. That was some incredible stuff out there. The thing is, we all love Gary Barlow very much, but... He's getting old now, and we kind of need someone new to support. Would... would you mind if we changed our name to the Gary Barlow and Xavier Fan Club Baseball Society? But before Xavier could answer, the semi-final draw was being announced. And for the first semi-final, we will have the ever-intimidating Mordor Giants versus Lucia's Baseball Team. At even the mention of Lucia's name, the Steamers became extremely angry. But then came the next announcement. And our other semi-final will be a thrilling match between the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers and Yarikawa Prefecture. It was a real dent to the Steamers' confidence. They'd only just beaten a tournament favourite, and now they had to play another. But to be the best, they would have to beat the best. And they were so, so close now. Could the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers really reach the Wii Baseball World Cup final? Okay, now class, today we are going to be thinking about our future. Woo! Future! Yay! yay, future, yay, yay future, future! Yay! Future! Yay, woo. Future! Okay, now one by one, I want you all to tell me what you want to do when you're older, okay? You first then, Susie. I want to be in the Me Parade! Good, Susie, well done. Um, now you, Stephen. I... I want to be in the Me Parade as well! Great, Stephen, that's wonderful. And how about you, Swazdala? I want to, um, I think I want to be in the Me Parade. That's excellent. I'm sure you'll make a fine Me Parader. And now, how about you, Pipe? I want to play baseball. 
Oh, uh, <laughs> now Pipe, I know sometimes we can all get a little ahead of ourselves, but we here in the Mii Plaza have all been designated to be in the Mii Parade, okay? I want to play baseball! Yes, Pipe, I heard you the first time, but it's the Mii Parade for you, you little rascal. I wanna... Now don't you say it. I wanna play baseball! Now listen to me, Pipe. It's not going to happen. Maybe if you were born in the Wii Sports home menu, you'd get the chance. But that's a long, long way away from here. Ah, <sighs> sorry class, I almost forgot my indoor voice there. Um, miss, which way would this Wii Sports home menu be? Just out of interest, not for any reason or anything. Oh, you'd, you'd have to go left for ages. Now enough of that. Okay, moving on. Hmm, how about you, Pop it? W pipe where do you think you're going? Pipe, come back here right now! Pipe! Pipe! Oh god! Pipe! Come back! Pipe! 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 Oh, oh, must uh, play baseball! Oh, hello! Um, what's your name? Um, I'm Pipe. Are you lost out here too? You aren't? What are you doing here then? You want me to follow you? Oh, okay. Well, lead the way. Okay everyone, let's get stretching those non-existent arms. The day of the semi-finals had finally arrived, and the steamers were warming up for their match against Yarikawa Prefecture. Okay, steamers, gather round! But as Engine Room prepared to give his pre-match speech, an all-too-familiar voice called out from behind. Hey, Stoke-on-Trent snivellers. Can't believe you got this far. Must have been very lucky. Well, it doesn't matter much anyway. Not even luck will get you past Yarikawa Prefecture. Guess you'll just have to watch us in the final. <laughs> Lucia trotted away. Don't listen to her, everyone. She's all talk, we know that. Now, Mind Brain, give us the rundown. Yarikawa Prefecture are a team that anchor around their ingenious captain, Shinosuke. In the baseball world, they call him the Inventor. Not only because his first name is Archimedes, but because he has a real talent for inventing tactics. For example, to intimidate the opposition, he makes every single player on his team cosplay as one of the greatest baseball players of all time. What? That sounds dumb. It's not dumb if it works. I myself am a bit of a fan of his. <laughs> In fact, remember that move we used against the Pittsburgh Purples? Well, that was actually a variation on a move he invented, known as the Yarikawa Stack, in which batters purposely play it safe and go for singles, allowing them to fill out the bases and pile up the runs one by one. If our fielding is good, we'll be okay, but we shouldn't get complacent. Shinosuke has plenty other moves, like the inverse fakey fakey and the Shinosuke swaz, and the... Well, you get the point. Keep on your non-existent toes, everyone. And as Mind Brain's rundown finished, both teams were called over for the lineup, and the game began. From the very first ball, Pipe found out exactly what Mind Brain had been talking about. Shinosuke pitched, and the ball curved aggressively towards him. This must be the famous Shinosuke swaz, he thought. And, expecting another vicious pitch, Pipe swiped early. But this time, Shinosuke had pitched straight, and Pipe's shot looped over the Yarikawa bases and earned him a single. Pipe had got lucky, but Shinosuke never made the same mistake twice, and Barnow was subjected to three Shinosuke swazes in a row. Spindle prepared for the worst, but this time, Shinosuke managed to spin the ball away from her, catching her off guard and resulting in another out. With yet more dipping, swerving and diverging pitches, Xavier suffered the same fate, and as seemed customary at this point, the steamers had scored zero runs in their first innings. Pipe was now in a difficult situation. Did he go all out and risk being humiliated by the Arikawa stack, or... Well, he couldn't really think of any other options. Pipe pitched the best he could, but after a famous Shinosuke single and a double to follow, Yarikawa had very much begun to stack the bases, and it wasn't long before they had their first run on the board. Pipe was getting increasingly more fired up, and as a result, he did manage to pitch one batter out. Not only this, but it dawned on him to try his new technique, underarm pitching, which might give him a bit more of an advantage. 
This worked well. The Yarikawa batters were not used to anything of the sort, and all Pipe needed was one more out, and the steamers could focus on making a comeback. But then, Saburo stepped up to bat. What? But it couldn't be. Saburo was the captain of the team they had just beaten. The British Museum Association baseball team. Pipe, it's not me. It's someone dressed as me. Imposter. Imposter, I say. Pretender to the throne. But Pipe couldn't hear him. Ah, uh, now there's two Saburos, thought Pipe. And he was so shocked that for his next few pitches, he was unable to concentrate, letting Yarikawa go 3-0 up. And then, Victor stepped up to bat. How could this be happening? He was sure that Victor played for the British Museum Association baseball team as well. Pipe, that's not me. I'm Victor. That's someone dressed as me. Pipe was yet again in a state of shock, and Yarikawa scored another run. But as Shinosuke stepped up to bat for the second time, Pipe realised what was going on. This was one of his dirty tactics. It was just as Mind Brain said. The Yarikawa players were cosplaying as other famous baseballers. Clearing his head, Pipe let out a sigh of relief, and he was able to end Yarikawa's first innings. Then there was Venus, and Engine Room now knew it was up to him, the captain, to change the momentum of the game. The crowd looked on with unease, but on the steamer's bench, they knew that their captain shone brightest in the face of adversity. And this time too, he did not disappoint. With this magnificent home run, the steamers went into overdrive. Wrinkles was able to hit a smart double. Barnell fine-tuned his senses and sent the ball on the perfect course for another spectacular home run. Woo! 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 And, using her huge open mouth, Spindle took one of her whirlwind breaths, sucking in all the oxygen around her and allowing her to supercharge her shot for another home run. The steamers were now ahead by five runs to four, and despite the fact that Cardboard couldn't keep the hot streak going, Pipe was finally on his game, and nobody was going to stop him reaching the final he was destined to be in. He collected out after out, and even fake Saburo was no match for his speed. The steamers didn't even need to score in their third innings. Pipe was a man on a mission, and taking a leaf from Shinosuke's book, Pipe spanned the ball close to the Yarikawa batters, forcing them to balloon the ball into the air only to be caught out by the equally motivated Steamers fielders. The one obstacle now was Shinosuke. But what Shinosuke didn't realise is that Pipe had plenty of tricks of his own. Splitters, spin balls and underarm pitching all combined into one. Shinosuke couldn't handle it. The ball hit the backstop's gloves, he was struck out and the game ended. It was completely surreal. Pipe was living the dream. The steamers were going to be in the final, and he almost couldn't believe it. But he didn't need to convince himself, as confirmation rang around the stadium that very instant. That's it! That's the final result of the day, ladies and gentlewomen, and it sets up a mouth-watering final. Tomorrow, it will be my pleasure to present to you the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers versus today's other victors, Lucia's baseball team. The determination emanating from the steamer's bench was so red hot that Shinosuke was able to stand there and roast a marshmallow on it. They were going to beat Lucia tomorrow and lift that trophy. Nothing could stop them now. But then, that night... Happy birthday! Wow, Wrinkles, I can't believe you're a hundred years old. You don't look a day over 87. Here, Wrinkles, I got you a £50 Amazon gift card. And I bought you the DVD box set of your favourite anime, Kung Fu Panda. And here you go, Grandad. I forged you a new samurai sword. Thanks, Engine Room. An old-timer like me really doesn't deserve a grandson as good as you. Ah. <sighs> but do you know what, everyone? The greatest gift I've received is something all of you helped with. And that's a place in the Wii Baseball World Cup Final! Woo! Woohoo! Woo! Yay! 
I want to share with you now the greatest piece of wisdom my old sensei ever imparted on me. It was my very first baseball game all the way back in the year 2000, when I was only 79 years old. And he said to me, Wrinkles, there is no I in team, but there's four of them and let's freaking win this thing. So tomorrow, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna win as a team. The next day came all too quickly, and Pipe and the team found themselves warming up for the final. The atmosphere in the stadium was boisterous, but even with the crowd at full tilt, Pipe could still hear the unmistakable droning tone of Lucia. Well, it's a shame they made it all the way to the final. It'll make going home empty-handed so much harder for them. We're gonna have to deal with a lot of that today, said Mindbrain. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, recited Wrinkles. We all know how Lucia's baseball team plays. It might be strange to revolve your entire playing style around verbally abusing the opposition, but it seems to work. I mean, they've managed to insult their way past the Mordor Giants for crying out loud. At that moment, the announcer began to speak. Well, 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 it's been a long old road for these two teams. A fierce rivalry in the group stage, a tough road through the knockouts, and finally they meet on the biggest of stages. Women and children give them a big hand once again. The Stoke-on-Trent Steamers and Lucia's baseball team. The players lined up amongst a cacophony of noise. Just so you know, Pipe, whatever happens today, I'm glad Beanus found you back then. Engine room was shaking with nerves, but Pipe was trying his best to stand firm. The game started, and he and Lucia were once again staring each other face to face. I'm sorry, new boy. I'm sure it took you a long time to get here, but I'm gonna have to send you back to the Mii Plaza now. This hit Pipe really hard, as he didn't in fact want to go back to the Mii Plaza. Worry began to creep into his mind. What would happen if they lost? Would his baseball dream be over? Would he really have to return to a lifetime in the Mii Parade? Lucia's eyes lit up as she watched Pipe become increasingly consumed by worried thoughts. And, taking the initiative, she pitched before he had time to refocus. Pipe was caught out. If the Stoke-on-Trent steamers hadn't started the game tense enough, the prospect of Mindbrain batting next wasn't making things any better. Please, Mindbrain, no stupid tactics. This time, just keep it simple. But Mindbrain had other ideas. Coordinates of X16, Y34, Z29, this is Alpha Bravo Delta Foxtrot with an east-westerly wind of 34 paradigms an hour, calculating maximum output at 60%. Carry the 15, make way for the 6, divide by the 2 and a 9th. Cross the I, dot the T's, coming in hot with extra source, times by the power of 357. Over the hills and far away, 011000111000111100111. Oh no, he's overheating. Mindbrain had hit the ball straight towards Lucia. She was going to catch him out. But then... Single. Mindbrain's plan had worked perfectly. He'd placed a hidden backspin on the ball that took it away from Lucia's grasp. Mindbrain had scored a single. Then there was Venus. And now that a small amount of momentum had been built up, Smaug was able to strike the ball with enough conviction to bag herself a double, scoring the steamers their first run. Lucia stepped up her game. Oh look, it's Owl Boy. Bit early this for you, isn't it? Aren't you nocturnal? But before Barn Owl could panic, Wrinkles shouted from the bench. In times of great need, family comes first. Barnell took his advice, and focused his senses in the direction of the stands, where his parents were sitting. Hit it top right, son! And with expert precision, Barnell smashed the ball to the top right of the field, and it ricocheted around the walls of the stands to score an epic triple. triple. The steamers were now 3-0 up. Although his advice was sound, now being over 100 years old, Wrinkle's samurai senses were beginning to dull, and, paired with some off-putting shouts from Lucia, you're old, you're old. He was unable to hit the ball. Lucia was now desperate to end the steamer's first innings, and as Scalene stepped up, her words became even more harsh. Ew, look at those disgusting muscly arms. Ew, yuck, nasty, ew. 
Oh. Scalene was feeling self-conscious, until Wrinkles once again chimed in with a pearl of wisdom. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. He was right. The one thing Scalene valued most in the world was strength, and in that regard, her arms were beautiful. She summoned more power into her arms than she ever had before. Scalene had hit many home runs, but this time she would go even further. And with an earth-shattering crack and a swing that felt like it would split her bat in two, she jet-propelled the ball nearly into orbit. A huge hit that bypassed the stands and went out of the park. 5-0 up. The steamer's first innings ended with Xavier, but they had accumulated a monumental lead. It was now time for Pipe to pitch, but although she wasn't getting through to anyone else, Lucia was causing Pipe real problems. Nobody's gonna care about you once this is done, by the way. Win or lose, you're going back home. Once again, Pipe's thoughts began to spiral, and before he knew it, Lucia, Ren, and Yoshi had all scored doubles. All of a sudden, the steamer's lead wasn't looking quite as substantial. Pipe tried his best to focus, but even with the ball hit straight towards him, he could do nothing but parry and fumble. 5-3. Enough, thought Pipe. He hadn't got all this way just to let everyone down. And with great determination and a good final catch from Wrinkles, he managed to get three players out in a row and send the steamers into their second innings with a slender advantage. But Pipe's challenge wasn't over yet, as after Spindle had managed to single, it was his turn to bat. Yeah, might as well get packing now. I'll make sure to wave you off as you go. Pipe missed the ball. It was still bothering him. What would he do when this was over? But then, some cheers came from the bench. Let's go, Pipe! You can do it! Chin up, champ! We're with you, man! Pipe's determination tripled in size. If he really was leaving after this, he wanted to make sure he did his job properly and went home with a win. If not for himself, for his teammates, his friends. Bang! <laughs> Great hit, and a huge home run from Pipe meant the score was now 7-3. The Steamers had liftoff again. That is, until Mindbrain did this the very next second. You're out! Curses. My eyes were crossed. And then, there was Venus. Hold on. Who on earth are you? I don't even remember you. I mean, seriously, have you been playing this whole time? Huh. I barely even noticed you. It's like you don't even exist. Oh no. No, Lucia, stop. Mr. Nobody, they should call you. Mr. Irrelevant. Lucia, stop. You don't know what you're doing. What's the big deal? I'm just saying how nobody cares about it. Oh. Um. Oh god. Oh, oh god. How do I stop it? Um. Hi, Venus. Hey, I I'm sorry for not noticing you. In fact, oh yes, I remember you now. You're that, um, a really good baseball player, right? Wow, I'm, I'm so sorry I never talked to you before. <laughs> I guess I just feel this need to insult everyone because I'm insecure about my baseballing abilities. And my overcompetitiveness leads me to push everyone I ever cared about away. Wow, you're really good at listening, actually. Huh, that's crazy. I actually feel a lot better now. And now that Venus had calmed down, and Lucia was feeling refreshed, she gave him a soft ball, and he was able to hit it high into the air for another home run. Home run. Wow, she calmed him down. I don't believe it. Maybe she's beginning to soften. Oh, for goodness sake. Hey, Big Chin, keep control of your stinky players next time. Oh, no, she's back to normal. But it was worse than that. Lucia was on edge after accidentally opening up. Get out of my way, Barn Owl, you vermin! You bird-brained fool! And she was able to catch Barn Owl out. Pensioner! Pensioner! She chanted at Wrinkles, but Wrinkles was unfazed. He thought back yet again to when he was just a young samurai. His sensei had made him sit under a waterfall until he was so calm that he couldn't even hear the water rushing past him. Using this technique, he blocked out Lucia's crazed insults and hit the ball for yet another home run. 10-3. Right. 
The steamers couldn't believe their eyes, particularly Wrinkles as he was blind. But they were 10-3 up in the final. And, spurred onwards by their scintillating form, Oscar was caught out by Smaug. Lucia was caught out by none other than Venus. And with the crowd chanting his name at a volume he'd never heard before, the game was ended in immaculate style by Xavier. The Stoke-on-Trent Steamers player's ears were blessed with the sound of the referee's whistle as he declared a mercy rule. The Steamers had won. They had won the Wii Baseball World Cup. Pipe was in tears of joy. He was so happy. He looked around at his teammates' beaming faces. And then... No, 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 no! shouted Lucia. No! Referee, objection! Oh, give it up, Lucia. Referee, the opposition are fielding an illegal player. <gasps> the crowd took a collective intake of breath. That player there, she pointed her baseball glove straight at Wrinkles, is 100 years old. And if I remember correctly, which I think I do, this competition has an age limit of 99. Is this true? said the referee. Well, yeah. You have to disqualify them! You just have to! Lucia, stop! They should be banned! Banned for life! Throw them to the wolves! Lucia, you're frothing at the mouth, for God's sake. Referee, what the he- Oh, hey, Venus, what's up, man? What the heck is going on? Interjected Sam and Fish's Captain James. Referee, you can't- uh, Oh, hi, Venus, how's it going, friend? You can't ban them! They've worked so hard to get here! Said Big H from the Gary Barlow and Xavier Fan Club Baseball Society. Referee, don't do that. Oh, hey, Venus, long time no see, man. Don't do this, please! Said Sabaro from the British Museum Association Baseball Team. Hmm, said the referee. Hmm... Hmm... And then, he made a decision. Well, I have no idea what's going on down there in the ground, but oh! Uh, oh yes, I'm just getting confirmation now. It seems the final will be replayed without the offending player. Pipe's stomach dropped. Not only would they have to play the final again, but they would have to do it without wrinkles. The team were devastated. All except for Wrinkles himself. Oh, come on, guys. Can't have any of you shedding tears for an old-timer like me. You know, my old sensei told me that a day would come where I would go from student to teacher. I was expecting to be at least 147 before that day came. But it seems the time has come a little bit early. Yes. Now, everyone. Deep breaths. We can do this. And for the second time that day, the players lined up, and the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup Final commenced. The events that had just transpired had clearly left Lucia unhinged. Bye bye new boy! Bye bye! <laughs> and Pike was so worried for her sanity, that he didn't hit his shot with as much power as usual. As a result, he was caught out. Mind's brain tried to get things back on track by attempting the backspin move he had done earlier. But Lucia had reached a whole new level, and was able to hold the ball tight enough to keep it in her gloves. With things getting even more concerning, Smaug 2 mishit a shot straight into the ground, and the steamer's first innings was over already. This wasn't how things were supposed to end. What on earth was going on? Pipe was now once again facing the reality of going back to the Mii Plaza empty-handed. Luckily for him though, Lucia was so busy laughing maniacally that she didn't even swing for the ball. And suffering from a lack of guidance, the rest of Lucia's baseball team seemed completely clueless. Within an instant, both teams' first innings had ended with no runs scored. But the insanity continued. Spindle only managed a single, and Barn Owl was caught out. And it was at this point that Wrinkles stepped in with his first teaching. He spoke directly to Scalene. With great power comes great power. Wrinkles was right. Scalene did have very powerful arms. And with that came great power. Scalene was inspired. And, utilizing what Wrinkles had taught her, she fired the ball far across the field and out for a home run. Okay, thought Pipe. Normal service resumed. They were back ahead, and even though Xavier was then caught out, followed by Venus, 
Heading into his second pitching innings, Pipe was feeling a little more composed, and he started strong by getting Marco caught out. But it wasn't going to be that easy. And, still just as irrational as before, Lucia shouted from the sidelines. Nobody cares about you, Pipe! You're an imposter! An imposter to Wii Sports! And an imposter to baseball! Just go home and save us all the trouble! What? No, that's not true! Don't listen to her, Pipe! Shouted Engine Room in retaliation. But Pipe was back in a world of worry. It was true. He was never meant to be here. Anna scored a double. Did the rest of his team think of him as an intruder as well? James scored a double. Was he treading on other people's non-existent toes? Jake scored a double. Someone else deserved to be here instead. Mike scored a double. And he was just taking up other people's space. Lucia scored a double. Would it have been better for everyone else if he had never left the Mii Plaza? The pattern continued over and over. And when Pipe finally came back to his senses, the steamers were 6-2 down, going into their final innings of the tournament. Things couldn't get much worse. And due to this, as Pipe stepped up to bat, Wrinkles decided to give his second teaching. When you hit bedrock in Minecraft, the only way you can go is up. Pipe hit a single. Maybe Wrinkles was right again. A single was better than nothing at all. And it wasn't just Wrinkles who was thinking positively despite the steamer's precarious position. What? What is Mind's brain doing? Oh no, he's not gonna... Temperature is 4.5 degrees to the nearest decimal. The Eiffel Tower is 320 meters tall, 13 meters taller than Tokyo Tower, which means I need to adjust by two percentiles. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I'd put you and I together, take away the four, add the five to the power of ten, and here we go! Mind Brain had hit the ball properly, and it soared up into the air. But it wasn't going far enough. At this rate, he'd be caught out! It was all a ruse. Mindbrain had taken the backspin technique he'd been working on earlier and applied it to an actual hit. And this was the catalyst the team needed to really kick into gear. Smaug scored a beautiful double, taking them to 6-4. Then Spindle with a single, and Barnell with his exact precision brought them within one run. Scalene used her powerful arms to perform yet more heroics. And, all of a sudden, the steamers found themselves ahead. And then, there was Venus. Gah! I can't stand it! I don't want to lose! It's just not fair! All I've ever done is play baseball, and then some kid walks in from the Mii Plaza, and somehow he deserves to win! It can't be my fault! It's my team! They suck! I know I keep shouting at them, but what am I supposed to do? Well, yeah, I suppose I wouldn't like it if someone said that stuff to me. <sighs> what am I doing? Why am I so angry all the time? And having somehow disarmed Lucia once again, Venus scored another run, and Mind Brain called the steamers over for a team huddle. Okay everyone, we're 8-6 up. They still have one batting innings left, so this is where we have to seal the deal. But don't worry, because I have a plan. Remember the Yarikawa stack? Well, we're gonna perform a mini version of that. Our next two in the running are Engine Room and then Pipe. All I need you two to do is get us a single. I've spotted a weakness in between their first base and the fielder behind, so I recommend hitting the ball into the ground so it bounces over them. Okay, you've got it, mind brain. And then what? What? Well, what's next? Oh, don't worry. Just make sure you can get those singles. But surely there's no point stacking unless... But before Pipe could finish his sentence, the game was about to resume, and Engine Room stepped up to bat. Like a true captain, Engine Room knew he had to set an example to his players. And, as reliable and brave as ever, he smashed the ball straight into the ground. It looped past first base, and he scored a single. Okay, Pipe, this is it. You can do it, he shouted as he ran to first base. But Pipe was feeling the pressure. As Engine Room said, this was it. If he scored, then maybe the team would want to keep him around. But if he missed, he'd be heading back to the Mii Plaza, and he might never get to play baseball ever again. The tension was unbearable. 
That is, until Wrinkles gave his third and final piece of advice. Pipe, I'm sure you're worried right now about going home. Just remember this. Home is where the heart is, so where is your heart? Where was Pipe's heart? Well, it was here, with the team, playing baseball. It finally dawned on him. Going home didn't have to mean going back to the Mii Plaza. Here could be his home. Regardless of what happened, he would sleep in the team changing rooms if he had to. He was being so stupid. He and the team had come on such a journey together, from beating Brown Town on day one, to the round of 16, the quarters, the semis, and now here. He had seen enough in his teammates to know that even if they lost, they would never abandon him. His home was with the Stoke-on-Trent steamers, and in that case, going home didn't sound so bad. With the pressure lifted, Pike was able to replicate engine room and bounce the ball, this time over second base to grab a single. Now, it was all luck to mind brain, and as he stepped up, it became obvious what he was going to do. He's not going to try and hit a home run, is he? He's only ever hit the ball properly once in his life, and he nearly got caught. But Mindbrain had it all figured out. Wind speed, zero kilometers an hour. Temperature, a cool 12 degrees. Breathing, steady. No maths required. Conditions, perfect. The scoreline now read 12 runs to 6, and as the innings finally came to an end, Pipe felt the best he had all day. All he wanted now was to enjoy playing baseball again, and without further ado, he began to bring the sauce. Marco barely even saw the ball fly past his face before he was struck out. Lucia's baseball team weren't giving up so easily, and they did manage to pull one run back but Pipe was having too much fun to care. Oscar was bamboozled by the sheer speed of the ball coming towards him, and he could do nothing to stop the inevitable. And finally, in a truly fitting way, Pipe and Lucia faced off against each other again. Lucia tried her best to get a good connection, but Pipe was now emulating the Shinosuke Swaz, and she couldn't get a clean strike. With one last dipping pitch, Pipe finally pulled off a clean splitter and the crowd was sent into absolute pandemonium. This time, it was certain. There was no argument, and the stadium announcer confirmed what they could all hardly believe. And the winners of the Wii Sports Baseball World Cup Final, everyone give it up for the Stoke-on-Trent Steamers! Engine Room and Mind Brain hoisted Pipe up into the air, and performed victory laps with him on their shoulders. Barnell's parents had flown down onto the pitch, and Xavier was being mobbed by the Gary Barlow fans. Spindle, Scalene, Wrinkles, Cardboard and Smaug jumped for joy. And then there was Venus, who had stolen two baseball gloves and was wheeling the announcer around by the head. The prize-giving ceremony was a glorious occasion, and the crowd wept tears of joy as Engine Room held the golden Nintendo Wii aloft. Hey, now we've got the golden Nintendo Wii, what does everyone say to going back to the hotel and playing a few games on this bad boy? Yay, 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 woo, yay, 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 yay! But as they started heading back, Pipe suddenly broke off from the group. Unlucky guys, you all played really well. We'll just have to make sure to win it next time. Hey, Lucia, do you want to come play some Wii games with us? What? Me? Are you... sure? Yeah, why not? Well, um... Do you have Nintendox? I'm pretty good at that game if I do say so myself. And with that, all the players headed off together. They may have competed for different teams, they may have said some questionable things to each other, but in the wise words of Wrinkles as they walked away, when the baseball is done and the Nintendo Wii has been won, a whole new friendship may just have begun.